Okay, moving on and into Song of Songs chapter 2 with the allegory. We're in verse 10. And again, we're going to bounce back to it in a moment where she charged the bride to remember, to not move forward, to know and grasp his delight in her. Okay, so we're going to hold on to that thought for just a moment. She says, my lover spoke to me and said to me, get up, my darling. Other, other translations say arise, and both are accurate. <laughs> Let's go away, my beautiful one. Look, the winter is past. The rains are over and gone. Blossoms appear through all the land. The time has come to sing. The cooing of doves is heard in our land. There are young figs on the fig tree. And the blossoms on the vines smell sweet. Get up, my darling. Let's go away, my beautiful one. So he's telling her to arise. And again, I referenced that we as believers go through seasons. Every single believer has to step into spring. And he casts vision for her because what he's calling her to to go with him. As we look further, we realize that she's actually, the very next verse is expected to be on cliffs and crannies. She's going to be up there on those mountains with him. Now that's a whole different ballpark to go, I see you leaping and bounding over mountains and hills. I don't know about me. <laughs> you, you expect me to have the faith to do that. And that sounds great until we realize what that spring season has looked like throughout history, through our own lives, biblically. That spring season, again, it's not the harvest, and it's not the winter where you're enjoying the harvest and you're holed up with it. The spring is still cold. You're still out there. You're breaking the ground. You're sowing seed where there's nothing. You don't get to enjoy the fruits of your labor, and you won't get to for a while. It's hard. We know from Song of Songs, verse uh, chapter 4, verse 8, that on these mountains are leopards, are lions. There is danger out there, too. So now she's going to be called to this really scary place, and... It's something we all have to face. We just got comfortable. The bride in this story is like, what? I am so comfortable operating in the bride now. You know, I love doing the women's ministry and the children's ministry and volunteer for this, that, and the other. You know, I love going to church. I love going to my, my little small groups, my little tight-knit communities now. Like, I learned how to forgive, and I learned that I need forgiveness. I learned how to give my offense to God. And, and I'm just like, I am so enthralled with this awesome little winter season <laughs> and then it changes the shift comes it's where you're called to something hard it's where you're called to labor in faith when when the sower puts that seed in the ground it's god that makes it grow you're you're breaking soil with him and you're taking something from your harvest, too. You're taking out of your food stores, your supply. This is food I'm putting in the ground. And instead of me consuming and enjoying it, I'm actually, by faith, putting it in the dirt and letting God take it and letting him do what he does with it. This is not an easy season for most believers. And a lot of us shy away from this season where we are called to sow where we're called to take ground from the enemy, where we are called to invest in this way. If you want to read some, some really cool <laughs> versions of this, this is, this is the moment where Esther, her spring is leaving family. And it's that moment where she is in the king's, like she belongs to the king now, and she says, if I die, I die. I'm being called to something hard. Um, it's where, it's where Daniel goes into the lion's den. It's where he says, I have to be faithful. I can't, I can't step away. I, if this is where my God leads me, it's where he leads me. It's, um, as Moses, he left a palace. He left the kingdom. And he goes
goes out into the desert. And even again, he has another spring when he leaves the family, the, the found, the oasis that he had, the life that he had there. And he goes back in front of Pharaoh. I'm called to something. You and I are called to go through this season where we've been equipped. We've been in the bride. We've been given a lot of head knowledge and a lot of heart knowledge that we've been internalizing through this winter. And we've really enjoyed it. And now he's saying, I'm leaping over mountains. I'm bounding over hills. Come walk it out with me. This is a walk by faith. You say you believe me. Now I want you to be a part of it with me. It's, it's John the Baptist from the wilderness to the prison. It's what happens to faithful believers when we really are faithful. It's Joshua leaving Israel and going and spying on, on other armies with the gaze of the Lord the whole time. It's Joseph going from his family into slavery, into being a servant, into being a prisoner, and having to be faithful through all of that. It was when Samuel was a child and he went from being the servant and in service of the high priests to being told, you actually need to step into correction. Though you are a child, though you are young, I'm actually going to be using you to step into that uncomfortable position of calling out the sin in others. That's not easy for a lot of us. Some of us excel at that and some of us, that is our mountain, is conf confronting others promise you that was Samuel's because <laughs> that's how God used him. The thing that is our mountain, the thing that is our hill, that's where God's going to call us and take us. And that's where he's going to say, I want you to be faithful in this area where you are most weak, where you are most terrified. In that place is where I'm going to meet you because you're going to see that I overcome that. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> One of the best examples of this that you're ever going to read is going to be with Gideon, where the angel of the Lord, God, comes to Gideon, calls him a mighty man of valor. Gideon is hiding in a well, <laughs> threshing uh, his grain so that no one will see, so that he's so scared of being caught. He's doing his farm work inside of a well. And God just steps in and says, you are a mighty man of valor. Let me cast vision for your life. The things you think are impossible. You are so scared of even being caught doing your farm work in front of the enemy. Now I'm going to actually send you to lead armies against them. How's that? <laughs> Whoa, that's, that's our spring. That's what you and I are called into. So he's faithful. Man, God is faithful because he doesn't just blindly throw us into that. He takes time with our, our Shulamite. He takes time with us to cast vision for our lives. We're not going blind into this. He, oops, where did I, I lost my spot. He in his own voice, us knowing it's him. It's not some third party who is mediating this meeting. He speaks his own voice to us. He speaks the language of our own heart. She's a poor shepherd girl. She understands farming. She understands herding of sheep. She knows what's going on in nature. So he speaks the language of her heart. He says, look, the winter has passed. The rains are over and gone. Okay. All right. I've cleared, I've cleared some area for you and me to operate. Blossoms appear throughout all the land. The time has come to sing. So just like in spring, there are signs of life. Things that we thought were dead are coming back alive. And he's drawing her attention to that. She needs to know that it's possible. She needs to know that others in the past have sown seed. And look what's happening to it. It's blossoming. I'm not saying it's fruitful yet. We're not there yet, but it blossoms. It says, the time has come to sing. The cooing of the doves is heard in the land. There are young figs 
on the fig tree and the blossoms on the vine smell sweet. He's saying it gives fragrance. The word that they use there in the Hebrew for the fragrance, the smells sweet word, it's actually the word used when the aroma of a sacrifice comes up and it makes God, just like when Noah did it, it just makes, it just toasties up God's heart. And he's like, oh, I am so pleased. He's saying, I am smelling you just like with a sacrifice that comes and is burnt and I enjoy it. You are going to go through something hard and your love for me through the sacrifices you are going to make in this season are going to please me. So make sure you know that he is pleased with you. Grasp that delight. And we'll bounce back again. He is expecting it and he's already receiving it from others. He's saying, look around you. The work you're being called into has been done before. You feel like you're you, <laughs> you feel like you're on the final frontier out there. You feel like you're you're this person going where no one else has gone before. Um, but if you read your Bible, a lot of this ground has already been covered before. He's taking you through something that he takes everyone through. This thing you think is impossible. Look around you. See what I've overcome. See the seed I've already planted with others. Remember the harvest. You are actually you, the believer listening to this. You are part of that harvest. You are part of one of those seeds that was planted a long time ago. You are the result of the faithful, the, the faithfulness of really weak but sincere believers. You were led to Christ by the most broken people. <laughs> Think about that. You, he's pointing it out to her. It's already here. There's already a harvest that happened. The winter is past though. But look around. Other people have been, have sowed. I have been faithful with them. Look around you. Look what has been done. And realize that you are part of that. Your current state, your current worshipful heart is already part of that. It's already a beautiful bit of fruit right in front of him that he so pleasingly loves and delights in. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna pause here because I need to liken this to another chunk of scripture for us to grasp and understand. See, she needs to grasp his delight in her because she's going to face some really hard times. I'm gonna show you that with David in just a moment. 